Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Janopoulos, also known as Dr. Stephen G. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to talk about carbohydrates, sugar, and why we don't ever have to eat it. And before I explain what there is to know about food, let me explain why I think we need to know more about food. Never in human history we had to really have this understanding of food because food wasn't so widely available as it is today. And now for the first time in human history, especially in the industrialized world, we have a bigger problem with overabundance rather than underabundance. So the overabundance is causing us most of our, basically our healthcare problems, right? The money we spend on healthcare, I would say 85% of every dollar can be attributed to the overabundance and lack of knowledge when it comes to food. And again, humans never really had to know anything about food. I mean, pretty much grew food or created a resource and we ate what was available. And it wasn't a situation throughout most of human history where we had too much. Well, now we have too much. So with that being said, we have not only too much food, but we have access to the most highly processed foods. And that for the first time, highly processed food is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And you're pretty much brainwashed to eat it. And now I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not brainwashed. I'm not. You were brainwashed from the day you were born. And you weren't brainwashed by the people at Big Broccoli. People at Big Broccoli don't have lobbyists in Washington, D.C. They don't buy television commercials. They don't place their products in movies and television shows and social media. So you don't have to worry about an over-marketing or a brainwashing to eat broccoli. What you have a brainwashing is to drink Coca-Cola or to eat fast food or to believe that breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between is the proper strategy for being you know, leading a healthy life. And all the recommendations that are given to you by your federal government and by the corporations that are stocking your shelves in the supermarket is to serve them. It's not to serve you. And that's clear. Like, there's no reason to question that. It is what it is. If you want to question it, you can put your questions in the comments. I'd be happy to address them. But I think most of you who are coming to my channel are clearly on board with that message. All right. So another reason why we need to know a lot about food is because there's also through processing and the need to have shelf life and the need to have low prices, we have an incredible exposure to chemical additives. So whether that be pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and the ability to spray our food with these pesticides required us to genetically modify the food so they can tolerate the presence of that chemical without actually killing the plant and just killing the pests. But what are those chemicals doing to us? And I think that's all pretty obvious. So with all of that being said, that's why we need to know something about food. But what I said in my introductory video that may have brought you here, the basic statement was sugar is so incredibly important to your being alive that your body does not rely on you consuming it. You're going to make exactly what you need no matter what. And what I mean by that is if you were to eat nothing but protein and fat, there was not a plant available on planet earth for you to eat. All you had access to was fish and poultry and beef and lamb and meat. You would have a fully nutritious diet. There would be no issues there. Now, is that the best way to go? No, I'm not making an argument argument for the carnivore diet. However, if you chose to pursue the carnivore diet, I wouldn't talk you out of it. There's a lot of great benefits to it. Then you say, well, what harm can it do? Well, it doesn't really do any harm. And you might say, well, what about the fiber? Well, we'll get to that. But when it comes to consuming protein and fat, the beauty is that your body can take protein and fat and it can manufacture what it needs from protein and fat, but it can also manufacture energy in the form of glucose. It can go through what we call gluconeogenesis genesis where you can create sugars pretty much from anything that you eat. And what if you didn't eat? What if you were to fast for a day, three days, five days, seven days, 40 days? I think the world's record is almost a year or over a year of fasting, not recommending that. But what is the blood sugar of somebody who has not eaten for 10 days compared to somebody who ate 90 minutes ago? Well, the answer is it's the same, probably between 70 and 85 milligrams per deciliter of glucose in your blood, no matter how long it's been since you've eaten, no matter how long the fast is. And the reason for that is blood sugar is so incredible incredibly well regulated, right? We regulate sugar. There's a, at any given moment in your blood after 90 minutes of eating a meal. So whether it be 90 minutes or nine days or nine hours or nine weeks or nine months after eating a meal, you have pretty much a teaspoon of sugar in the five liters that makes up your bloodstream. Now that's super important because if you had a half a teaspoon, you'd probably find yourself in a coma. If you had a teaspoon and a half, you'd be diabetic and that extra half a teaspoon would be causing 
all kinds of inflammatory processes that will ruin hormones and, and blood pressure and, and cholesterol production. And the list goes on and on of the damage that it does. So blood sugar, like your body temperature, is incredibly well regulated, right? Your body temperature is 90.6 degrees. If you wake up one day and it's 99.6, you know it. You don't feel right. We've all had that experience. You say, oh, I'm 99.6. I have a fever. So I must have the virus. Just one degree. Now that's true whether it be 130 degrees outside in, in Las Vegas or Baghdad. And that's true if you're the Inuit living in, in the Arctic Circle. No matter what the temperature is outside, your internal temperature is very well regulating. So no matter what you eat, no matter how many teaspoons of sugar are in a chocolate cake, you decide to eat that whole chocolate cake, your body's going to do backflips within 90 minutes or as quickly as possible and get back down to that teaspoon. And as you can imagine, most of us kind of lose the ability to do that. And that's when our blood sugar starts to go up and it causes all kinds of problems. So the point of the message is you will make exactly what you need. Now, if you don't want to fast and you want to eat protein and fat, so let's just say you, you're on a carnivore diet. A carnivore diet is a diet that's basically everything you eat comes from animals, comes from an animal product well then what you'll do is you'll use the fat to make structural you know repairs to your body to your cell membranes and all of that you know we use fat for a lot of things we need fat to make cholesterol we need cholesterol to for our brain to function your brain is basically 70 percent fat so we're going to use those fats for structure and we're going to use it for energy we can use the fat to make ketones for energy we could use the fat also to make glucose for energy protein as well. We break down protein into amino acids. We use those amino acids to build our own human proteins and we can take any excess that we have and make glucose out of it and use it for energy. So we can pretty much make exactly what we need when it comes to carbohydrates and sugar. Now, if you're an athlete, you're a bodybuilder, I don't recommend not eating carbohydrates. You could. There are bodybuilders who do that. Matter of fact, they do it during a certain part of their training to cut down and lose body fat by eating only protein and fat. But there are different reasons that we can use carbohydrates and glucose as an energy source to participate in a certain event. If you're a football player, if you're going to you know, play certain sports or go for a hike or climb a mountain, you can certainly use carbohydrates to give yourself an energy source. Again, you don't have to. There are people who are fat adapted who can train themselves to use a whole lot less carbohydrate, but we're not saying carbohydrates are bad for you unless they're bad for you. So how do you know they're bad for you? Well, if you have metabolic disorders, well then the carbohydrates could be a problem. So you may want to cut down on the carbohydrates because if you were to look at all three groups of food, carbohydrates, protein, and fat, one of, out of those three that gives us problems is the carbohydrate. And for most Americans, lowering your carbohydrate load is just a very good idea. Lowering your protein is not always a good idea. Matter of fact, you could argue that most Americans are actually deficient in protein. Same thing with healthy fats because we've been on a low fat experiment for 50 years and has not worked. So what we're saying is carbohydrates for most of us can easily be taken out of the picture or reduced significantly. All right. The last point that I want to make on this subject of carbohydrates is the fact that we want to create an energy balance where the amount of food that we take in and the amount of energy we expend is fairly neutral. So we don't have these dramatic fluctuations in our weight. So we don't want to lose too much weight. We don't want to gain too much weight. It's better to be neutral if you're adequately muscled and you're adequately nourished. If you're overnourished and you do need to lose some weight, well then you can do that by reducing your carbohydrate load. But once you you have that balance, what would take you out of balance is consuming more food than you need. And what would make you do that is craving certain foods. And usually those cravings come in the form of carbohydrates. Carbohydrate of the three kinds of food is the one that's addictive. You know, for example, if I were to eat a big giant steak, no side dishes, just a big 60 ounce tomahawk ribeye, and it filled me up completely. I couldn't eat another bite and there was some bites left. I just can't have any more. We've all experienced that. If you take that plate away and you drop a dessert in front of me? Well, there's always room for dessert, right? Why is that? Because the brain doesn't have a mechanism to tell you you had enough carbohydrate. The brain has a mechanism to tell you you've had enough protein, to tell you you've had enough fat, and to tell you you've had enough water. But into this mix, if you add carbohydrates and or sugars, you shut that down. 
So to add sugar to water, let's just call it beer, alcohol, or sugar, well, then you can become addicted and not, not, not you. Nothing is going to stop you from drinking more and more beer until you pass out. But if it's water, you can't just endlessly drink water. Your body will auto-regulate. It'll tell you you've had enough. And this is true for protein and fat. It's not true for carbohydrates. We can consume massive amounts of carbohydrates. We do it with pasta. We do it with bread. We all know that dinner is coming and we sit at that table and we consume massive amounts of bread. And why? Because you can still be hungry hungry even after eating a whole lot of bread. If you ate as much steak as you ate bread before your meal showed up, you wouldn't have any room for your meal. But because it was bread, then you have room for your meal. So now you've overeaten, right? You've gone into excess when it comes to your calorie. You're no longer neutral. You will experience weight gain. And this is why people do so much better when they remove bread from their diet because, the, and, and they attribute it to becoming gluten-free. And if you're gluten-sensitive, I'm sure that's the issue. But removing bread from your diet does a whole lot more for you than just remove gluten. So with all that being said, welcome to our YouTube channel. It's great to have you here. We're going to be posting these videos every week. Okay, please don't forget to subscribe. It's very important that you subscribe, hit the bell, get a notification that we've created another video.